Terry Murphy here of Young Artist Family Workshops, where we invite kids and adults to participate. This time around, we are going to make a marbleized art project, where we make our own marbleized paper. For this project, it's going to be done in two separate sections. One is we're, we're going to be making a background for our landscape waterscape. So you will need um, Bristol board is what I used and you can take that onto a piece of cardboard or a cutting board, anything that lies flat. And we'll also be using watercolors and a big brush, but that's later on. First, we're going to make our own marbleized paper with household ingredients. So, cooking oil and a little measuring spoon, a variety of cups, your regular food dye, and this specialty dye in case you want to try that. Either or, or you can use both. This is Wilton Colorite, used for cake decorating. You can buy it at any craft store, and I think Joann's also carries it. So, let's go on to making our own marbleized paper. So, I have a pan of cold water and two different kinds of paper. One regular copy paper, and this is uh, a thicker cardstock that is made for all kinds of media, both water and dry media. Um, what we do is take about a quarter teaspoon of oil and place it in a cup and about 10 drops of food coloring. Now you'll notice that this Wilton food coloring is almost like a gel and it has a very powerful color to it and that will work perfectly. The only thing is uh, on all of these you have to mix them quite well so it starts out as a big blob of color. Did you hear that Prospect Heights kids? The code word is blob. And what you want to do is mix it up with the fork um, enough so it rather pulverizes the color and instead of one dot you have hundreds of little dots. So. I'm gonna mix it for about a minute. I'm not gonna make you wait. I'm gonna fast forward until um, I have a couple of colors mixed. Okay, and as soon as you mix them, let's pour them in to our cold water. Sort of mix it around in a little pattern. You'll see some of it just goes right to the bottom and some of it floats on top and the thing about mixing oil and water is that they don't mix. So we'll be able to have a nice little pattern here in a, just about a few seconds. Now let's lift this up and it's always fun to see how it turned out. So that's pretty powerful. And we lay that down right away. We don't wanna disturb it too much because we like the way it looks. And in the meantime, we can put in another piece of paper so I just put in copy paper and we let that soak in for a little while. You'll see that the, it'll start appearing, the pattern will appear through the paper. And then when you're comfortable, just lift it up. And it's not as bright the second time around, but that's okay. Let's try and make as many colors as we can from this batch. And then we'll go on to make different colors. We'd have to empty this and get clean water every time and then mix a couple more colors and put them in. Next, I'm going to show you the same thing with regular food coloring dye that you might buy at the grocery store. We'll be right back. Okay, and here is the same thing with food dye that you could buy at the grocery store. So I have a blue and a, a green. And just drip it all over. And then I'm going to add 
a little yellow too. And let's see how that works. One. It's pretty darn nice. And I think put in coffee paper to see how that turns out. lighter as usual and now I think I am just going to dump a bunch of coloring here just both with the, the Wilton that we've been using the other one and just see what happens we're just going wild here with color This one first. Ooh, that might be my favorite. I like that black color that it's a little tin color right produces. nice too. Remember I said that had an, a little oily or a gel texture to it. Um, at the end we may have to blot that a little because it does not dry as readily as um, something that is more water-based. But you'll see when you get to that part. Let me put this in. Okay. Join me for our next project while this dries. We are going to make a nice watercolor background. And here we see a nice variety of marbleized paper. All different kinds of patterns. Some light and some dark. And that's actually a good thing. Now we're going to start painting our background for our waterscape. What I'm using here is Canson Bristol board cut to about 12 by 10 inches and it's uh, taped onto a board so you can tape it onto cardboard if you have it or a cutting board or any flat surface. And also around me I have the marbled paper that we created so I can just be influenced by them by what colors I am choosing. So we have um, dry cake watercolors and I'll start here. I also have these little pieces of bristle board and they're going to act as my palette so I can test out these colors. I'm going to start with a a purple and just begin at the top. This is going to be our sky and we'll just bring down this color and somewhere in there I am going to switch colors to a more peacock type of color. There we go, we go back into the purple just a little bit and bring it down and we don't play around with it too much. I'm going to stop right there because I just want the sky to be the upper third of the paper and we're going to 
You can let that dry for a while, but since we are using this bristle board, it really saps up the paint pretty quickly. So I'm just going to keep on going. And this is going to be the water area. Now to differentiate it, I'm going to leave a thin white line. It'll just look nice and then I don't have any problem with like re-wetting that surface. And I'm going to go in the opposite direction of going light turquoise to the purple. So back to turquoise. And then using a a three quarter inch flat brush. And we're just pulling that color down. When the when it runs out, you just grab some more. And you just go into what you did a little bit, but not too much. This is probably going to be my last swipe of this turquoise color because I am going to bring it back to that purple. It's pretty simple, it's pretty flat. And if you use your imagination, you can already see some depth um, in this waterscape, a horizon line, and that's where that little white line works wonders for us. And then what we're going to do is use our marbleized paper to make folders in here. If you've ever gone to the West Coast, um, Washington, Oregon, California, you'll see borders or boulders in the water right offshore. And they're so huge and majestic. And that's the seascape that we're going to be doing. So if you can imagine some of these um, not only as border, boulders, but the reflection of the boulder in the water. That's what we'll be concentrating on next, and I'll come back and show you how to cut these or rip these into interesting shapes. Okay, now ready to use our marbleized paper to make the boulders. I really like these darker ones. I think they'll show up nicely against this background and I'm lucky enough that some of them already look like boulders. Now you can use scissors or you can just rip this apart. I prefer ripping because it looks a little bit more organic so I'm just going to um, figure out what part I'm going to use as the boulder and it's just going to be this section here and then we'll just start laying them out separately. So just turn this around. As you make these cuts. pretty nice. Um, I might get rid of this little piece here because of the nature of water it sort of makes everything flat on the bottom. So that looks more like a boulder in the water. And then I'm going to use some of these um, lighter and but still grayish papers for the reflection in the water. So just going to cut them sort of in a mirror image 
of what I had here. It doesn't have to be exact because the eye will figure it out. And so something like that looks good. This might be a good time to use our scissors. So there's one. And you can go on and do this with a bunch of others. I'm going to, because we have so many papers, I'm going to do several of these. And just sort of like a puzzle, I'm going to figure out which ones I like, which ones I don't like, which ones I need new um, samples for. And I'll come back and show you what I decided on. I cut out several pieces of our marbleized paper, mostly ripped them up. I did cut out the moons and the reflection of the moon. Um, and so now what I'm going to do is, you know, you can put it um, just like you were making a puzzle, position them the way you want them, and then once you got it the way you like it, then you can start gluing them down. I am le going to leave like a bit of the paper showing through, the background paper, um, because I think it looks like water in between the rock and its reflection. So let's begin with pasting them down. We'll start with, I think, the bigger pieces first and then go on from there. So you can use Elmer's glue or you can use a glue stick. Uh, whatever you use, make sure you get all the edges because we don't want anything to be peeling up from the corners. So glue it down and get every little piece. And then put it down. Well, hey, that was fun. I hope you enjoyed making this marbleized paper seascape with me. And if you'd like to show me your sample, send it to tmurphy at phpl.info and we'll put it up on our social media. And if you have leftover marbleized paper, and I know you do, 
Why not make another or make a bird or a fish or a landscape? We'll see you on the next one and I hope you had fun.